What's going on, crew? Welcome to another episode of the Feed Me, Fuel Me podcast. Darius and Jeff coming to you from Scottsdale, Arizona. And today we've got the pleasure of being on the mic with the former host of ABC's Extreme Weight Loss and the founder of Transform, Chris Powell. What's up, man? man How's it going, being, guys? It's good, man. Thanks for being here, thanks brother. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for carving out some time to be on the yeah. show. This is a long time coming. This is you know, a long we, time coming. We've been bouncing this back and forth <laughs> for almost a year now. I've known you guys uh, for a long yeah, time. Yeah, so it's super <laughs> good. You know, we were just talking off the mic about about how uh, when I came up to ASU for grad school in my first semester, I actually got to hear you speak for the first time to what is possible with a degree in exercise and wellness. Yes. And, uh, you know, everything that, that's come of since your experience at ASU. Um, and uh, I was like, I had no idea the extreme weight loss dude <laughs> <laughs> right. Came from Arizona State. Yes, yes. That's you know? crazy. Well, it, ASU's got an incredible exercise science program. They absolutely do. They, like yeah. I, know, I remember back in the day when I was in, it, they were always neck and neck with Penn State because mm-hmm. it was like Arizona State, yeah, Penn State one and two. And um, it's funny because like for, <clears throat> I remember going to school and I was like, gosh, I mean, what, what, what can I do with a degree in exercise science? I can mm-hmm. be a trainer. There's so many trainers out there yeah. and everything. I was like, where could this go? And I mean, it paid off. Sure, <laughs> it definitely yeah. paid oh, off. Yeah. 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 It worked. <laughs> You know, coming uh, out of ASU, what was your your first big break? Because you know, you may we'll we'll dive into this in a second. You know, because you just posted uh, about your your ongoing battle with depression and working with uh, your 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 therapist and your coach. Yes. Um, and I want to dive into that in a second. But coming out of ASU, like, what was your first big break? Because you didn't get to extreme weight loss. Right off the bat, right? I, w- I wouldn't assume. No, no, no. It, it was, it was. A, what is, you know? They'll say it was a overnight success. <laughs> Ten years <laughs> Ten in years, making, yeah. <laughs> it, and it really was. If if you ask, you know, anybody from back in my day, from like the college days, mm-hmm. I mean, I've always been a dreamer, and I, I would always like enroll people in this dream of like what what is to to become. But um, it just always seems to take longer than expected. But right. as long as you just keep chipping away mm-hmm. sure enough over time before you know it it, it, it happens yeah, but yeah. W- rewind back to when i graduated believe it or not so i i did go to school for exercise science but mm-hmm. i never thought i was actually going to be a trainer i actually mm-hmm. i always i plan on being an airline pilot okay so i mean i, I got my because my dad was a pilot mm-hmm. and he was my idol and so i started flying when i was like 17 and when i was in college and shortly after college i was actually making my money as a flight instructor so I was building my hours because I was like, oh, I'll just go into the airlines because I can make a good living. I can mm-hmm. raise a family just because, you know, I, I'm, you know, moving closer and closer to graduating from college. It's like, well, what am I going to do? Yeah. You know, like, I, I could, but here, here's the catch. I don't, don't tell my old students this, but I was terrified of flying. Like, absolutely terrified. I'm fine flying in an airplane, sure. but if I'm actually at the controls, mm-hmm. I don't trust myself. There's too much happening at once, mm-hmm. and I got 1,200 hours in, a, in an airplane, like, as a multi-engine flight instructor. Right. And, like, I just remember I would land, and I would sign my, my student's logbook and send them on their way, and I'd just be like, oh, thank goodness. I made it, <laughs> I, I made it through this one. And I was like, i got to do it all over again tomorrow. But I, I found myself... Obviously, with my degree in exercise science, because I loved it. I, mm-hmm. I, I found a passion for, for fitness when I was 14. So I ended up going to school just, just to do something that I loved because the airlines required a four-year degree. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, um, yeah, so I found myself doing that. But then I was, hot, I was moonlighting as a personal trainer in my off time when I wasn't flying mm-hmm. because I just freaking loved it, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, and so it was actually... The, uh, the big shift happened, and, and I'll totally answer your question. Yeah, no, I, I, I know where we're going no, with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the big shift happened, believe it or not, it was um, on September, uh, it was September 9th, 2011. I got call, I, I got the, I received an email that I was actually um, accepted for an airline interview with Mesa Airlines. It was uh, United Airways, or, yeah, uni- it was a, um, U.S. Airways Express. Okay. Mesa, they, they were operating out of Phoenix. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is my big break. <coughs> September 9th, 2001. So okay. do the math here, right? Yeah. So I'm like, go time. Mm-hmm. Two days later, September 11th, 2001. And yeah. I'm oh. watching it all go down. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, this is affecting so many lives on so many levels. Mm-hmm. But even on so many levels, people don't think about now. 
all of a sudden, because of everything that happened, the airlines just collapsed. They were firing and furloughing. I mean, it just disrupted. Everything changed mm -hmm. for everybody sure. right on that day. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, here, here I was. I was like, I got my airline interview. This is it. I'm moving on into the airlines. Everything is going to go. Oh, no, you're not. Right. You're not going to go on move on into the airlines. In fact, the world is changing now, mm -hmm. and now you better figure out something else to do. So I, on, September, on September 13th, 2001, I walked into Pure Fitness on Scottsdale and Curry Road. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know yeah. if you remember Pure Fitness back in the day. So I just walked into the local gym because I lived around the corner, and I was just like, hey, I got a degree in exercise science. I would love to be a trainer here. And this guy, Larry Arnold, greatest dude ever, is like, yeah, dude, of course. <laughs> he's like, man, you look fit. You got a degree? Absolutely jump on board. He's like, it gave me a, like the curriculum and everything. I was like, mm -hmm. fantastic. And within about <clears throat> 30 days, I was packed. I had a full roster because I was just, you know, I was that trainer. In it. And I was in it. And yeah. I, lo I, I love the educational aspect of it. So sure. I would explain, hey, when you're running on the treadmill and when you're doing intervals, here's what's happening physiologically in your body. Mm -hmm. So I just explain that. And then I take them over. And while we're actually going through just, you know, I, I might have a beginner client. And I've got them on some selectorized equipment. I just have them just exploring a range of motion. I'm explaining what's happening as they're going through it. All of a sudden, other people kind of start well, what's going on over here? Mm. And then before you know it, I've, I've got like a little crowd listening to the lecture. So I was, my, my roster filled up fast. Sure. So that happened really quick. And then there was another trainer over there, my, my buddy Jason Cooper. He, he was the other trainer. He was packed. Yeah. And he was slammed. And uh, another guy, Mike Santini. I don't know if you know Santini. He's a great mm. dude. Um, but they all came up. And they were, they're all trainers okay. right here yeah. in Arizona. And um, so me and Jason Cooper, we ended up splitting off and going down to a world gym and buying the rights to, to a world gym world there. World gym. No yes, kidding. world yeah. gym. I remember that. On University and Rural. Okay. It, it was Oz Fitness and it turned into world gym mm -hmm. and it was like in the Cornerstone area. And um, <clears throat> so we bought the rights to training there and we started our own little company called Absolute Image Personal Training. And uh, so my, the big break is coming here. No, 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 <laughs> right? no this is Because it's, it's just about the hustle, right? Right, yeah, So, yeah, yeah. like, literally, like, I graduate, it's like, hustle. You're going to be an airline pilot. No, that's not going to happen. Okay, you're going to do what you love to do, and that's personal training. Mm -hmm. Now hustle. I get in there, fill it up. All of a sudden, it's like, I got a full roster, man. I'm, I don't want to be stuck here working were, in a big box gym. Were you doing the – because th that's – how I lived prior to the Marine Corps from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. Oh, yeah. Every hour on the hour, I would take a nap in the kids' club <laughs> during the off hours <laughs> oh. and then be right back at it. Yeah, Groundhog yeah. Day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was it was the grind. Mm -hmm. And especially as a trainer, like you were up early because you got to be there with the with the corporate guys. Yep. And then, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, you know, the, the moms, they want to come in before Midday. the kids or yep. before the kids even get up. Oh, or sure. then they want to come in. Usually the moms start trickling in a around nine mm -hmm. after they drop the kids off from school. But then yeah. you got all that, the, the mm -hmm. early crew that has to get it in before they get off to work. And you're jamming. And then then you get a lot of these college kids coming in in the evening and they yep. want to train till nine o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And it's just day after day, six days a week. Sure. And it was, it was a grind. And then usually on the seventh day, you, you're supposed to take a day off, but, but a don't. couple people are like, well, <laughs> I, yeah. And, and so I'd, I'd probably squeeze in four or five sessions on oh, a Sunday. Oh, yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. I'm and available. Yeah, that, that's I'm, a, I'm you can't it. say no. Yep. <laughs> and it's not like, plus, it, it was better I was doing that than mm -hmm. going out and getting in trouble somewhere. Yeah, right? yeah, sure. And so I'm like, okay. I still you know. figured out how to get in trouble. And <laughs> then <keep> <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm glad I didn't figure that out. <laughs> so it, I just, it was just nose to the grindstone. Mm -hmm. and, and so we filled up fast. And I was like, hey, this is going really well. So I teamed up with the other trainer there. We started our own, our own little company. Mm -hmm. And we're like, hey, we got to drive people through the door. I... Um, had a couple connections at Good Morning Arizona. Oh, cool. Right? Okay, and yeah. so I was like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to go down there one day, and I'm going to go ask a producer if they're interested in somebody doing fitness segments. And I'd seen people on the show doing yeah. fitness segments mm -hmm. and everything. And people were like, no, don't go. They're just going to tell you no. Just don't, mm -hmm. don't even bother. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always those people in our lives. Right. Like, it's never going to happen. Don't mm -hmm. even bother. I was like, what do I have to lose? I'm literally, if they say no, my life doesn't change at all. Right. right. But if they say yes, then we got a gig on Good Morning right. Arizona. <laughs> and they're going to know all about who we are and what we're doing down here. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, we got a market. We got to bring people through the doors. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I, I walked down there. I walked right up to a, one of the producers. And I was like, hey, 
my name is Chris. I love exercise science. I got a degree. I graduated not too long ago. And by the way, here's some ideas for some fitness segments that I came up with. And, and watching TV and just kind of knowing what they like, I was like, hey, here's top five button thigh exercises. Mm. Here's the top three fitness gadgets. Here's three things you never want to do in the gym, you know, like right. sensational stuff. Sure. And she's like, hmm, gosh, no one's ever just asked me to, to do a gig before. Yeah, why don't you come in on Monday? Crazy. Break number one. Yeah. Nice. Break so I come in on Monday, and we do a segment on a really cool, I remember the segment well. It's my very first TV segment ever, and I'm just like, obviously freaking out. My yeah. heart rate's to the roof. My blood pressure, I can barely breathe. But we end up doing a segment on this really cool piece of uh, equipment that just came out that measures, that measures resting metabolic rate. Okay. So it was really cool talking about energy expenditure and all this other stuff, and mm -hmm. it went well. And so they said, hey, that was, that was great. You were a little nervous, but you really got into your groove. Why don't you come back in a couple weeks? Cool. There you go. And it just turned into this into this gig. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I, I I was still for the first six months a little too sciencey on there. I was oh, talking sure. about glycogen depletion, <laughs> super compensation, <laughs> all this stuff. So, so the same producer, she pulls me off set like six months in, and she's like, "Hey, people, like your ratings are good when when, when people watch because you just get so excited, but nobody knows what you're talking about." Yeah. <laughs> she said, "Let me tell you something. Everybody, just, they just want to lose weight." And so if you just, you just bring it down and you just really focus on the weight loss thing and just really kind of speak to them because they don't know what all that stuff is. So make it mm. easy for them to understand and use a lot of examples. Yeah. I started doing that and the ratings went through the roof. Awesome. So I, ended, I had that gig for like six, seven years. Okay. No kidding. And it's fantastic. And I brought a lot of people through the doors yeah. with our business and it was amazing. And that, that turned into this, this huge appreciation for, for traditional media, television right. yeah. and editorial and reaching out to the New Times magazine and all these other local magazines and, I'll, hey, I'll write an article for you. Yeah, we'll do a photo shoot over here. And I'll, th that was just the hustle. And it was like, wow, marketing tells people who you are and what you have to offer. And then you can bring them through the doors. And we had, we had something really good going. It was awesome. And that's nice. all pre-social media and everything before that was MySpace, all... Facebook, all that. And so MySpace was my second big break. Actually, believe it or not. No kidding. Yes. Okay. So, so fast forward. So I had my gig on um, Good Morning Arizona for from. I started in 2002. 2003. I ended up getting an email from this guy who was he like all of a sudden when I started doing these weight loss segments, all these emails started pouring in, and this is this is the, the, a big epiphany for me. And all these emails, because uh, Good Morning Arizona, it's a statewide broadcast. So it's right. from Kingman to Tucson. It covers everything. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, these, these emails started pouring in from just around the state of, like, hey, Chris, I'm 500 pounds. And, you know, I'm, I'm diabetic. I lost my foot, Damn. you know, and, or wow. I, I lost my eyesight from the diabetes mm -hmm. and, and all this other stuff. Like, hey, Chris, I'm 400 pounds. I've got, I've had three, you know, heart surgeries and all this other stuff. Hey, Chris, I, I need to, and it was like, the, the one common denominator was uh, there's so many people out there that were super obese, 450, 500, 600, 700 pounds. And there were a lot of them, and they're asking mm. for help. Yeah. And they're there. But, but they also, and this is what broke my heart. And I remember one person wrote to me, she, and she says, I, you know, I haven't been outside in a couple of years. I, I will go outside at night, and I'll do my shopping then because I just don't want people to see me. Wow. I pride myself on being invisible. Mm. And I was like, oh, wow, like I can't imagine that, the, yeah. that kind of pain. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so like my eyes were open to that. Mm -hmm. They're here and they want help and they're amazing people. They just don't know how to take that first step because they're looking at the mountain and it's so big, mm -hmm. right? So June 2003, I got an email from a guy. He was 630 pounds at the time. And he's like, hey, dude, I'm just a year older than you. And it's, a, it's the same story. Like... I haven't left my house in two years. The doctor just left and said, I'm not going to see 30. I was 24 at the time. He was 25. He's like, dude, this isn't the life I want for myself. I want to get married. I want to have kids. I want to experience love. Yeah. I, want, I want all these things. And he's like, what can I do? And so I couldn't stop thinking about just this one guy. And um, I ended up going out to his house. I, I was like, hey, where do you live? And I thought about it for a while before I responded. Yeah. And I was like, I just want to go meet you. So I... A week later, I drove out to his house and sat down on his couch. We just start talking. He's mm. the coolest dude ever. Mm. Like, we're just, we're laughing and we're joking around. We're talking about South Park because we're both yeah. big South Park yeah. fans and everything. <laughs> we're joking around. I'm like, dude, I don't know where this is going to go, but I'll be back on Tuesday. 
So I ended up showing up every other day for two years. He ended up losing 400 pounds, becoming my best friend. That's awesome. Yeah, we went through everything together. Mm -hmm. And I uh, reached out to a bunch of doctors in the area. They helped him. They got all the the surgeries to remove the skin. They got his eyes and his teeth done, everything. He ended up posting his befores and afters on MySpace because we were on MySpace back then. He posted his befores and afters. Uh, a, A website somehow saw them scraped him off that site and did a whole uh, an article on him on a, it was a website called E-Bombs World. And it was like the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. site. Oh, yeah. E-Bombs, yeah. I used to waste hours on <laughs> yeah. E-Bombs World. Dude, E-Bombs World is the reason I'm here right now. It was like one of those one of those pivotal <laughs> moments because they <laughs> found his before and after. They posted it mm-hmm. and it went bananas. Wow. And so there's like a half a million hits on this thing mm-hmm. in like three days on, on his story. It was before yeah. and after. There's like pictures of him and me at like 630 pounds and him and me when he's like 229. Just this good looking dude. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, that's when everything just took off. And within two weeks, we were scheduled to be on the Oprah Winfrey show, Today Show. 2020 came out and did a story wow. on us. Holy and it, we just, I mean, we were everywhere. Mm-hmm. We were on the doctors. We were just, it was just like, it went but it went nuts because he lost 400 pounds in like two years. Yeah. We documented his journey so he could like share the process. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that's that's where everything really started. Yeah. So it was just like, boom, one thing after another. That's and so they awesome, just started man. rolling. So. Yeah, it's it's been a wild ride. Yeah, I mean, I could continue if you guys want. Oh because man, the, the <laughs> that's insane. I, I'm sort of interested. Like, what sort of drew people, like the the overly obese people, to you? Because you know, you see trainers that that put the message out there, and they they'll get fit people, mm-hmm. and they just want to do like a bodybuilding show or whatever mm-hmm. they want to get into. But do you know what it was that you know drew people that were overly obese to towards you? Was it just your positivity, your messaging? Or can you even put your finger you on know, that? You know, I couldn't then, uh-huh. and I can now, because then I was, I came from exercise science, mm, yeah. so I'm very methodical, and I was like, oh, the reason this happened is because I created a carb cycling structure that did this and this, <laughs> and behaviorally and psychologically, it satisfied these needs, and da 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 And I was like, it was, it was all science then. And I'm like, wait a second, but now, having been in it for a long time, mm-hmm. and I stand back, I'm like, wait a second, no. Granted, that worked physiologically for him. Sure. But that only that that he was only able to apply that because I was his friend. Yeah. Mm. And I was there, and Mm. and and I confided in him, and he confided in me, and there were so many emotional needs that I met for him, and Mm. that he met for me, and like we became buddies. Like we were together all the time because we were friends. Yeah. And that's it's like we were friends. And, yeah, we were losing weight also together. Mm. It's not like, oh, he was a client, we're losing weight. Yeah. And then I could develop a relationship with him. No, we were, like, we're buddies. Yeah. You know, and which is, it was amazing. Mm. And um, because then he, because he didn't have any other friends. Yeah, and, right. And, but th- we clicked, and he was just like, and I'm like, dude, you need to get out and see the world. And so I, I, I would take him out to the clubs in Scottsdale. Yes, and we would just go, and we dope. would have a great time. And I introduced him to all my friends. And mm. he, he became a part of a family. Yeah. And that was that's what was missing. That's was awesome, love man. and compassion yeah. and, and, and friendship. But I didn't even get that at the time. Right. Because he was sure. just my homie. Yeah. But and it was all science that did it. Right. <laughs> oh, of, course, <laughs> of course. Yes. But then in hindsight, yeah. yeah, I look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, it was there all along. Mm-hmm. And but I've learned that over the years. Yeah. You that's know? Good. Which, you know, is the 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 perfect segue into the the conversation I want to have with you with regards to emotional needs being met Mm -hmm. you know you uh we were off the mic i was like you know i asked you how you and heidi met and you met at landmark and i've been through the landmark curriculum and what i noticed there's a very small percentage of people that show up at um seminars and whatnot like landmark who already have it figured out right everybody else is either feels lost knows that there's deep work to be done or they're trying to get over something that's emotionally blocking them from progress in their past yes and uh you just recently po- uh made that post about your battle with depression and you know everything and when i told people you were going to be on the show today they're like yeah we just saw his post you know what does he have to be sad about? Mm-hmm. Right. You know? Sure. Um, so when, when, you know, to, to bring this all full circle and get this thing going, uh, when did you identify that you were even struggling with depression? Because everything you talked about so far has just been, 
you know, I've been on the grind, making it happen, mm -hmm. and you know, with a smile on my face the whole time. Right. Um, <clears throat> so I've actually battled with depression. This is actually going to be fun because this is some stuff I haven't talked about. I don't think ever, but wow. um, well, we appreciate you being open. Yeah, yeah of course. course. Yeah. So uh, I actually battled through waves of depression a couple different times in my life. Mm -hmm. um, first time was when was it, rewind back to like 2006 to 2008. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up herniating a disc in my back, and so you know back then, doctor goes, "Oh, you got a herniated disc in your back, herniated L4 L5, mm. bulging L5 S1." Yeah, and, I, and you know, that's a life sentence for now until they can find some kind of technology to do to really do something about it. But right. doctor's like, hey, this is going to help with the pain, Vicodin. Ah. So in the meantime, and I'm hustling. David had lost his weight. We were on Oprah in 2020 and all this other stuff. And I'm laid out on my back. I got a prescription for Vicodin. And also in the meantime, I had, I had um, patented a product. I, was, I, took, I saved up all my money. Sent it over to a factory in China to build this to, to cr like bring all this product over and it was this is my dream is mm -hmm. like this little new cool nutrition system and it tanked they, they actually sent me all the I'd saved I mean we're talking over two hundred thousand dollars and I sent it over to this factory in China mm -hmm. they sent me all the product and the product was bad oh, and oh I, yeah yeah and like so, expiration bad no it was like it first of all it wasn't the design that I sent defective <laughs> zippers broken gel packs leaking <gasps> ruptured. I got a whole container of it, a whole semi-container. Oh, my God. $200,000 plus worth of product that I had borrowed money on, about 100 k of my own money, 125 k of borrowed money. And, um, and now I got a herniated disc in my spine. So this is 2006. Yeah. Herniated disc in my spine. Doctor goes, hey, here's a prescription for Vicodin. I'm like, I take that. Yeah, it makes my back feel better. It also helps my head feel better. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I'm like... Wow, like, yeah, I'm in two hundred thousand dollars worth of debt, but I can't feel it right now. <laughs> and, and, and you know, li life life feels pretty good. And it was that was the escape. Mm. And it was I was like, uh oh. And uh, fat, I mean, I was high. I mean, it started with with Vicodin, and then turned to Percocet, and then OxyContin, mm. and then. I realized I was high every day and it just kept getting worse and I had to take more and more right. and more because I was just, I was escaping reality and I was running away mm. from the, the mess I had made and my back didn't even hurt anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was just, I was taking it to get high and I, and my, my integrity was gone because mm. I found myself, I was, I was, I was I still was spending so much time trying to put a face on yeah. for everybody else because I was the guy. I was the guy that helped David and I'm helping all these other overweight people. I was running these free classes that were open to anybody who was like oh, 100 pounds overweight, you know, and mm -hmm. to come in and, and and so and I I had to put on that face even though I was hurting. Mm -hmm. And then I was I that I just kept turning to prescription drugs to cover it up. And um and that's that's when I first started dealing with depression and it was it was a chemical depression sure because it was just like hey when when that stuff wears off you go low oh you yeah. go really really sure. low and then um and then it was when i ended up you know i spent two years consistently hooked on prescription drugs and um and then there was that whole transition off of it when I, and that's a long story in and of itself. When my, my roommate, who's an amazing person, he was hooked also. Mm. And he ended up going to the hospital with all kinds of major issues. Mm. And yeah, and, and I saw him go upside down. And so I, I went cold turkey. But, but in, in the process, I was looking back and I was just in such a dark place emotionally and mentally. And that's, I mean, I wish I had been talking to someone because... You know, granted, I know a lot of people, they'll struggle with bouts of, of depression or whatnot for, mm -hmm. for years. I mean, two years is a long time. Mm -hmm. And if I knew now what I knew then, I, I, I could have reached out to someone so much sure. sooner to help sort this mess in my mind, to help, to help me create some kind of strategy mm -hmm. in life that, so I didn't, need, I didn't need drugs to cover mm -hmm. it up, right? right. I didn't need, need the prescription drugs. And so, um, so that was the first time that I'd really dealt with that depression, like that kind of low and that really dark place. Yeah. And that's what led me to Landmark. Okay. It was when I was, I was just two months sober and I, I'd lost everything. I, I was living out of my car, sleeping on friends' couches, and then I met Heidi and we went through Landmark and, then, you know, she, ha she actually became my life coach, my therapist wow. in the meantime mm -hmm. because 
she'd been through a lot in her own life and she understood a lot of the curriculum that we had learned in Landmark. So she was explaining it to me and we were kind of living it out. And then over the months, all of a sudden it's like when we came together, things started happening. And it was mm. just like, oh, now a documentary, now they want to come in and shoot this documentary on me and David, who are now living together. We were, we were living together for like two years after this. Oh, wow. Like I said, he was like my best friend. Yeah, sure. like we, yeah. went, we went through a lot. So we ended up getting a place together. I'm finally sober after my two-year bout with drugs mm. and depression. And now I got Heidi there and we got David and like we're, like things are moving and mm. all of a sudden I get a call from this production company in Los Angeles that wants us to come out and create the concept for a show which turned into Extreme Weight Loss and it's like all of a sudden like all this stuff starts happening and then um we can skip i mean fast forward five six years uh, we go through this amazing ride on the yeah. show yeah. right and which was awesome but then the show ends mm -hmm. and i had developed this whole identity for myself sure as being like i lived that show yeah. like mm -hmm. it wasn't it was like I was tr I was transforming lives. Yeah. Heidi was right there with me. We're transforming lives. We're meeting the most incredible people that are becoming some of our best and closest friends. And then all of a sudden, ABC's like, "All right, thanks so much for your five years with us." Mm. Okay, I was going to ask, did they cancel it, or were you done? Well, th they never technically canceled the show. They actually put it on hold. Okay, <laughs> so it never got canceled. Wow. So we gave them five years. Uh -huh. It was a six-year contract. So we gave them five years, and they're like, "Well, we're not going to cancel it, but we're going to put it on hold. We're going to try out some other programming." So they, they put another uh, another show in our slot called uh -huh. "My Diet Is Better Than Yours." Ran like three episodes, then. Yeah. <laughs> that's what happened after yeah. that. But um, but then after that, I mean, that that was it from there, and mm -hmm. and so I didn't realize it, but you know, I, I had my identity over five years right. had changed, and this is did like you, living it. Did you shift from a chemical addiction <laughs> with Vicodin and Percocet and Oxy to a? Uh, an addiction to fame because now you're like stop you in the airport <laughs> yeah. which is amazing i, I yeah. love what people do no it, okay. it wasn't but let me tell you like the 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 addictive thing about what it was that we were doing mm -hmm. that i can't get enough of yeah is when when someone gets <laughs> when someone gets it you mm -hmm. see it click yes. and all of a sudden you know you see these stories that from the show and they're beautiful yeah they were great they're, and we're spending and it's not like we don't just swoop in for you know a month or for two months shoot a bunch of stuff and we're like all right see you dude mm -hmm. no we're, we're 365 days together they become our family yeah i mean several of them they've moved down here one of them he's one of our head coaches yeah you know and like wow. so these people they become our really close friends and so mm -hmm. like that's that's where everything happened it was sure. absolutely amazing mm -hmm. and and for anyone you're a coach yep um, I'm not sure if you've spent much time coaching no. or anything, but it's addicting. Sure. It's addicting when oh, yeah. you have that person who all of a sudden it clicks and they get it and they excel and they, they reach a point where it's your job as a coach just to get out of their way and you watch them go and you're like, yep. wow, mm -hmm. I was a part of that. You right. know, when you watch them and there's so much excitement in mm -hmm. that, you know? And so that was fun. Yeah. And that was amazing. And it was, it was incredible. And, and we loved doing what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And, and, but there's a payoff to that also. It's, it's, there's a huge payoff when you're different places and people go, thank you so much for what you're doing for everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's incredible who you are. And like for, for the world, you, you give us hope. Right. I'm like, oh, I don't want this to end. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> dude, this is way better than any yeah. Vicodin. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. I mean, like, I've arrived. Yeah, yeah. People are like, wow, here. you're such an amazing person. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm like, I will. Yeah. I, I, will. <laughs> keep keep, keep, I want to help people. Come on, like, yeah. bring them to me, you know? And so it's like, that was a, an amazing ride. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, they're like, hey, thanks so much for your time. We're, we're good now. Yeah. And I was like, oh, wow. What do I do? Who am I? What, what do I mm -hmm. do now? This is like I'm committed to making a positive difference in this world. Like that's right. what I'm here to do. Mm -hmm. how, how, do how am I going to do it now? Because, okay, so I don't have the platform of the show anymore. And then, you know, that kind of curtailed into a lot of these other things that we ended up building. But when that went away. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it, but uh, there's an identity crisis. Mm -hmm. And so I dove into, into building Transform as we know it, but Transform, it took, it took a couple of years to build Transform. Yeah. Sure enough, like, so I, I was seeing, I see, I've been seeing therapists for eight years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, even, even when I was seeing my therapist, it didn't dawn on me until last year that I had been depressed from 2015 when... Our show ran its course yeah. to 2017. I had been in a state of depression. And, and even like the, 
Heidi, my wife, she's just like, man, like you're different. You should go talk to someone. And and I would, and mm -hmm. I would go and like I would just go talk to people. I would experiment, just see different coaches, therapists, counselors, yeah. etc. But and and having that relationship with a coach or a counselor, it's um, it's a very personal thing. Some some you click with, and some you don't. So right. it's, it's good to go mm -hmm. see a handful. But and during that time, I was trying to find one that I really clicked with. Yeah. And it, I. And I until I did, I couldn't get myself out of the funk. Uh -huh. And it was, I was, lit I was living life, I was literally nose to the grindstone, like, I, I gotta build it, I gotta build it, I gotta, I gotta build this next thing yeah. so we can do what we're supposed to do, so we can help more people. But I was so fixated on that, I wasn't able to feel or experience life outside of it. It was, it was a state of depression. Sure. Mm. And because uh, I was trying to, to, I was trying to go, I wanted to be who I was before. Yeah, you know, I wanted yeah. to be Chris Powell, the host of Extreme Weight mm -hmm. Loss, which is amazing. And, um, yeah, so it's, it's been a wild ride. How did that affect your family? Were you, did you, no, I mean, like now that we're on the, the back end of it, was there, you know, during that two-year period, were you there but not present? I did, found did myself that, there a lot, yeah. and I, I'm sure some a lot of parents they, they can they might be able to relate. Oh, for sure. And that I'm trying, I'm building, and I'm building, I'm building, and here's cash. You know, cash comes along, Ruby comes along, Maddox and Marley. There, mm -hmm. hey Chris, or hey Dad. You know, oh check out this, this this drawing I just made. I'm like, oh yeah, oh that that's really cool. Oh that that's really cool. Oh oh look look at that. Look at all those colors. I'm. It's robotic. My uh, answers are, I'm uh, not uh, present with them. Yeah. I'm not like, oh, wow, look at this. You know, I, and, and I found myself almost in a state, it was like just a state of almost hypnosis. Sure. You know, yeah, absolutely. just so hyper-focused on doing what I thought I needed to do. Mm -hmm. And I kept telling myself the story. I was like, it's for, it's for the family. I gotta, I gotta, we'll create this. It's for the family. And it's also for, the, for everyone that we've promised that we would help because mm -hmm. it would be like thousands of letters of people asking for help. They saw the show. I'm like, hold on, guys. We'll build it for you. Yeah. So I'm like, it's my, my responsibility for them. It's my responsibility mm -hmm. for the family. But in the meantime, I lost connection with everybody around me. Uh -huh. sure. On the flip side, though, because I wasn't traveling it at all anymore, I did find myself spending I was a lot more time at home. So I was actually I was there. Okay. I was there, even though I wasn't always there. And I found myself withdrawing from the outside world. Mm, mm, which sure. is it really interesting. And again, these are it's textbook depression. Yeah. Sure, right? Withdrawing from the outside mm. world. You're present, but you're not present. Yeah. Sometimes hyper focus on a particular thing. And it's like you, you go back and I'm like, oh my gosh, like the writing's on the wall. It was yeah. right there all yeah. along. Sure. I can't believe I didn't even see it. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize I I was struggling. It's almost like it's almost like you know when you got the flu, mm -hmm. and like you're like, oh, is the rest of my life gonna be like this? And, <laughs> and, and, and you get so used to just aching and just being there, and then all of a sudden, like, you remember that day that you all of a sudden the fever breaks and you just you start feeling better. You're like, mm -hmm. wow, mm -hmm. oh, and and you forgot what it felt like to be so to actually feel good yeah. right. and to not be aching. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of like that. The realization when you start to come out of it, it's all of a sudden, wow, I was aching then mm -hmm. and now i'm clear and i'm present I'm, I'm there with my kids and i'm i'm here and i can i can i can i can go outside i can carry in a conversation with my yeah. neighbor i can mm -hmm. go to a restaurant i can say hi to people and mm -hmm. i can actually be i can show up for them that's you awesome know? so it, it's been it's been a, an amazing ride um but i and i i will i must credit my wife yeah. for having the wherewithal and seeing me struggling mm -hmm. and also the therapists and the counselors that sure. I saw to help me see my life where it is and mm -hmm. help me to all, look, everything was the same. They just kind of, they switched the lens through which I was looking at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was a yeah. different perspective. It was like, Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Reality, just sh reality then appears different mm -hmm. right. and it's a lot better. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more freeing. Yeah. And you don't care. You don't, you're not carrying so much weight anymore. Yeah. You know? Sure. Yeah. Sure. It, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, it, it just sounds like you've got, you know, above and beyond Heidi, you've gone out of your way to construct a very powerful inner circle that almost holds you accountable for your happiness. Like, hey, man, mm -hmm. you know, what you're building is great, but you're slipping. Yeah. You know, that, is, is that a conscious construct for you? Um, no, it wasn't conscious. It, it kind of happened through 
through the connections that we made in the past sure. and through the people that we've brought into our lives. And the coolest thing is that some of the people that are my, like, my daily life coaches, our good friends, mm -hmm. like one would be Bruce Pitcher, who actually, I, who we helped in season four okay. of the show, yeah. you know, and, he, and he's, he moved down to Arizona and he's like, dude, on a, uh, he was at my house when I left today, when I okay. came here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And on a regular basis, if, if he sees I'm not doing well, I'd be like, hey, dude, what, what's going on? And I'll be like, oh, I'm just, I'm busy. Or he's like, no, no, no. What's going on? Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and, and he's, he can feel it and he can see it. And, and it's wonderful because, you know, we got other amazing people like Bob Brenner from season three of the show. He'll like, he just calls in and just checks on me every once in a while. Hey, what's going on? Yeah. And it's like none of the surfacey crap. Yeah. Right? You know, like when we connect, let's go ahead and dive deep. And mm -hmm. it's, it's wonderful. It's, it's really something how. It's like it's the, my coaches are the people that I've coached. Right? Oh yeah, you know? that's wild. That's yeah. crazy. That's be and it's yeah. crazy and it's beautiful at the same time mm -hmm. because we're all human. Mm -hmm. Right. We've all got our own crap that we're dealing with, and it's it's like I might help you today, but down the road I I need you to help me because mm -hmm. I'm going to be struggling too. Mm -hmm. Like we're all going to struggle sometimes. Like oh yeah, I struggle with depression from 2006 to 2008. Then I struggled with depression again from 2015 <laughs> yeah. to 2017. Yeah. Look, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. Like, and and we've I've had been through these amazing waves of great times. Yeah. But then I also look back at the times when I have struggled, and there there are some there are some really powerful lessons to be learned from yeah. that. Mm -hmm. For awareness, for mm -hmm. growth, for strength, and so yeah. like, I, dude, there's going to be some inevitable battles in the future mm -hmm. sure. up here. Oh yeah. And but. Thank goodness, though, that over time I've grown that inner circle mm -hmm. of my close, you know, the, my, my tribe. Yeah. And then I've also got these therapists and counselors that I can go to outside of it that are not, they're not subjective. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. and they, they can just look at it and be like, all right, you're full of crap. This is the way you're seeing it. And it's not even reality. This is the mm -hmm. way you need to look at it. And this is how you can strategize yeah. some kind of plan to get out of sure. it. Sure. Yeah. 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 Man, what have you learned from being a husband and a father? Because I mean. Looking at your kids and doing like working with your wife, there's all these lessons that you they uncover that you mm. don't see within yourself a lot of times. Yeah. What have you learned from oh, being wow. a husband and a father? That's a great question. Um, so for being a husband, I have learned. Boy, <laughs> I've learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely learned humility. I've learned. I've learned to apologize, <laughs> yeah. which is really, really important. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've learned, I've also learned forgiveness because nobody's perfect, mm -hmm. you know, and it goes both ways. Um, there's, there's still other struggles there that, that, <laughs> that I battle. This is a totally another podcast yeah. for another day. Yeah. <laughs> like, the whole competitive nature, because like me and me and my wife, dude, we're like we're running neck and neck, and mm -hmm. it's like yeah. we're partners, but at the same time, it's just like. How many likes you get on that post? <laughs> you know? Just keep pushing yeah, each other forward. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. But so, but but that definitely kind of that that curtails into like I'm I have definitely learned um, to humble like humility, mm -hmm. especially because early on it was like you know first few seasons of the show like I was a host right yeah. and then mm -hmm. I didn't come on to like season four and then she now then she's my co-host now everything we're doing we're doing together which is amazing I wouldn't have it any other way but like I was used to being the man right. <laughs> back in the mm -hmm. day and then and now and it's crazy also because my wife she's got she's got a real good business brain she she is business development got it and and a lot of people they don't see that side of her because they see her as a coach and everything like that but man she is sharp mm -hmm. she see i tell her all the time like she sees the matrix when it comes to business sure i like business development i like to create products and solutions for people so in business She's the man, not me. <laughs> I make the products, right? Right. But she's the one who runs the business. Mm. Uh. And so it's interesting. And also, she she really does, she manages the household. Yeah. So it's like. No small tasks. No. Yeah. But yeah. I also came from this life for, so, I mean, I didn't get married till I was 30. And so for, I was a bachelor and like for so many years, I was the man. And even after we got married, I was the man because yeah. it was like, I was the host of the show. I'm Chris Powell. I was yeah. doing all this stuff. I'm like helping all these people. And then I'll, then I get married. And now this, there's been this huge transition of power, yeah. which over to, to my wife. And I, I mean, 
looking at it, I'm like, wait, I, I, I want to have that power. But the thing is, I don't because she, she does all the right with it. She, right. she does so good with it. Sure. And she's and and because of that, she that benefits our family. That benefits all the people that we're trying to help. Yeah. Like if the roles were reversed. I'd run this thing into the ground so fast, <laughs> like, <laughs> and then we couldn't help anybody. Yeah. Right. So, so it's where it needs to be. Mm-hmm. So I've definitely, I mean, I've had to learn to check myself in my marriage, sure, mm-hmm. big time. Mm-hmm. And it's something that, I mean, any given any given Tuesday when I'm sitting on the couch or talking, you know, talking to my therapist, you better believe that's going to come up yeah. because <laughs> it's just like it's just that it's that constant, and mm-hmm. I'm still working through that. Yeah. I am a work in progress. So I haven't figured that one out yet. Yeah. So, it, and the thing is, we'll ha- we'll be great for a few days, but all of a sudden something will come up, and I'll just feel like more power is being stripped away from me. And I here I am, come like, well, I was the man. Give yeah. it back to me. Yeah. You know, I want, I want that back. And then, but it usually comes out in some kind of stupid knee jerk reaction where sure. I'm just being a hole to her, mm-hmm. you know, and then and then I need to take a step back and be like, wait a second, this mm-hmm. is all stemming from a deep emotional need that I'm struggling with. It probably stems from my childhood. So yeah, so th- I've learned that. Sorry for the long winded no, answer that. about our marriage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then for my kids, um, I mean, patience is number one because I'm definitely that dad who I'm like, hey, here you go, go ahead and try to figure that out. No, 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 that's not how you do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, and, and watching them, w- like letting them fall is yes. probably one of the most difficult things in the world for mm-hmm. me because I am, and, and everyone jokes about this, but they all call me the hover dad. Mm-hmm. You know, like wherever my kid goes, I'm like just hovering over top uh-huh. of them. And I'm like just learning. And, and that was me for years. And it still is to a certain extent. I have to really? check myself all mm-hmm. the time. Yeah. Because like I am a safety fanatic. Really? And I'm always, oh, yeah. I am always freaking out about yeah. what they're doing, where mm-hmm. they're going, you know, running with scissors in the house yeah. and all that other stuff. Stuff. Like I lose it, but um, that and I, of course, you know, a, a therapist told me because we were we were my my wife and I were actually in marriage therapy because like we get all kinds of therapy, yeah, like, regular oh, yeah. therapy, marriage therapy, like sure. it's amazing stuff. Yeah. yeah, and she was like, we were talking about unconditional love. She said unconditional love doesn't exist. Mm. And I was like, hmm. hmm. She said except in one condition. That's the love that you have for your children. Right. You know, because she was talking about the unconditional love that we had for each other. She said, no, it's, it's very conditional. You guys have rules that you live by right. to respect and honor each other. Right. I know and you might want, not want to say it, but that is conditional. And you chose. Yes. Mm. It's, and yes. yes. That's mm-hmm. interesting. You chose. And you, you actively choose them every day. Every yeah. day. Uh-huh. Yes, absolutely. She said, but unconditional love, that's the love that you guys have for your children. And both me and Heidi were just like... Mm. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's crazy. And it's just amazing. And I, I must say, parenthood is incredible. Yeah. And and so I'm, I'm. They also call me the stable horse because it's like wherever <laughs> wherever we go, I always just want to turn around and run back home, and I just want to like hang out there with my kids and yeah. do my thing because it's just so much fun. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, the whole unconditional love component, it's le- it's legit. It yeah. is so amazing and so real. But um, but also. I mean, I could go on about my kids forever. Yeah. So we, we can totally talk about other stuff. I also learned, learned the, um, the importance of discipline is, mm. is consistency is everything with my kids. And sure. I, I, I'm going to brag on them for a second just because everywhere we go, people are like, your kids are so respectful and they're kind. Yeah. And, and so if you ask any of my kids, there's, there's three rules that we live by in our house. Mm-hmm. And they, uh, that is hard work, respect, and kindness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and if you don't do those, the, the, it's punishable. Mm-hmm. If sure. you do not work hard, if you are, not, if you are disrespectful for, to someone, and mm-hmm. if you are unkind. Um, and if you are, then the, here's the catch, though, is that if you are not consistent with them, and consistent means every, every time, time you yeah. slip yeah. up and do consistency takes so much time and energy. Mm-hmm. It's the last thing I want to do, especially when you're hyper focused on getting oh, yeah. a project done mm-hmm. and your kids they know it and they will try to get away with it. They will everything. test you. <laughs> they will <laughs> they test will. you. Yeah. And you if you lose that consistency, you start from ground zero Absolutely. again. And you gotta mm-hmm. build it up. Sure. And so they know they know the rules. And mm-hmm. I must say consistency was the most important thing that we've ever exercise and practice in our home yeah. 
to help them become the humans that we want them to become, that, mm. that we that we feel will help them be yeah. happier in life. Create, I love create that. the habit. That's it. And you know, that's I love sorry that. to talk. So no, much. dude, no, that's awesome, man. I love, I love that. I love the rule of three though because it's it's so blanket. They can run their own checklist mm-hmm. and start checking themselves. Oh, totally. You know what I mean? Totally. And, you know, simplicity is king. Yeah. You, know, you only have to remember these three things. That's it. Before you make that stupid decision. Ask yourself three questions. Oh yeah, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and it's so true. Yeah, and the best, like, no joke. I'm not even kidding you guys. I could call Ruby. She's five years old. We can call her right now, mm-hmm. and I'll say, Ruby, what are the three things that we live by? Yeah. And she will rattle them off to you. It's the coolest thing in the world. Awesome. And it's also been bra- everywhere we go. I'll, I'll be like, Hey, pal pack, three things, and they'll all yell out, <laughs> hard work, respect, <laughs> kindness. Yes. And, 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 and then all, all, everyone around is like. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I love that. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. <laughs> what is it like building something greater than yourself in the multiple phases that you've done it? What's it like being an entrepreneur and building a business and building a family? Mm. Because you've been in that, that entrepreneurial status right. with your family the whole time. Right. So you started both from ground zero, but you didn't start both at the same time. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I actually started all the business beforehand. And then mm-hmm. when I married Heidi, I quickly became a stepfather of two. Okay. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden, like, a whole new aspect of my life went from, like, zero to 100. Yeah. I mean, like, overnight. Yep. And I'm a stepdad now. And then we have Cash. And then we have Ruby. And so... Um, Everyone's like, dude, how do you find balance? We still haven't found balance. No. I'll be honest, yeah. dude. Sure. We haven't found balance. And as much as we try, I don't think we'll ever find balance. Yeah. Right. You know? right. I think as long as we just keep, like, we actively work toward it. Yep. And, and I'm not, I won't, I'll, I'll be the first to say, I don't know if what we're doing is the right way to do it. Sure. Because we, I made sacrifices back in the day. Like when we were shooting our show, I would be gone for, pretty darn close to three months span at a time when I'm like sleeping on people's floors, you know, as oh, we're yeah. getting them going mm-hmm. on the show and everything. Mm-hmm. And I would hit the road. I'd be gone. And I missed a lot of their upbringing. And, and a lot of, I know a lot of people frown on that. Yeah. Imagine like, it, I sure. get it. That's, those are my kids and I feel yeah. like I'm missing out, but I'm like, but am I doing this for the greater good? Right. Am I doing this to create something and be an example for sure. them? But I'm not there. Yeah. Right. So what's, What's right here? I don't know. You know, it's so interesting that you say that because I remember having that same conversation with my wife because, you know, the gym was a thing and then we got together. Now, I didn't inherit a family, but when we decided to start having kids, I was like, I, we made an agreement that if anything required me to be gone or not, you know, be the dad I want to be by virtue of building a business... I wanted to do it when they wouldn't remember it. Right. You know, yes, I get when, that. you know, yep. in, in that, in that balance, when they need you more than they need me, this is the time for me to do the thing. Yeah. You know, yep. so that, that becomes a very easy, an easier decision or concession right. to make so that, you know, 10 years from now, I'm not missing football games right. on behalf of building right. a business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. I have had that exact same conversation in my mind a mm. hundred times. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. And I came to the same conclusion. Okay. I was like, let me just grind now. Yes. Right. Okay. And 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 I'm glad I'm glad I it, it all worked out. Yeah. Sure. Which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um and what's really cool now mm-hmm. is that when we travel, if we travel for more than a couple of days, yeah. we can bring our kids with us. Oh, now. for sure. Yeah, you guys were just in Dubai, right? We were, yes. yes. How was Which that? Is, dude. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> dude, Completely it, derailed the it, conversation. Yes, but, but it's everything yeah. you could imagine okay. and more. Like sure. it is it is like a freaking wonderland. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's just everything's on a whole new level there. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. it's so wild. Mm-hmm. But like for me, that was a bucket list item. But even more bucket list to take my kids there and yeah. have them experience it. Mm-hmm. Like it was it was beyond yeah. our wildest dreams. And I'm yeah. sure, you know, like uh, me when I was a kid being a military brat, one of my parents, one of my 
one of the things my parents did strategically was expose us to the planet Earth and yes. use Uncle Sam's dime to do so. Mm-hmm. Yep. And even though it was a pain in the ass then, you know, moving around, starting over and all that stuff that, that comes with being a military family, here I am closing in on 35 and I wouldn't trade that experience no. mm-hmm. for the world. No. You know, and talk about now, education. Now, and yeah, you're, and, you know, you're you're yeah. a couple couple years ahead of me in in the parent game. When things get and, cha- and in the age game, <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell. I can't tell. I'm Shoot. about six years ahead of you in the <laughs> age game. Uh, you, know, <laughs> you don't look it. <laughs> Much uh, appreciated. When um, what are some of the things that you do to help your kids identify in the here and now? The because they're only looking at life like this. Mm-hmm. How do you help them identify, you know, the the long term um, benefits of some of this short term adversity, whether oh you having to be gone yeah. or you know, um, you know, having to not go out with friends because you got a couple of teens now, right? Uh, so that they can focus on sport or school or whatever. Yes, you know, what are some of the things that you've in place to help ease that? Um, Oh, it's it's a great question because it actually depends on the child. Mm. Great answer. Yeah. I'm so happy that you <laughs> <Okay>. said that. <laughs> because it's wild yeah. how they all have such different personalities and such different perspectives on the world. Sure. And we've got so our 13-year-old, mm-hmm. he is without it without a shadow of a doubt, he is the kindest and most respectful of all of our children. Okay. But when it comes to hard work, and looking down the road, he's a here and now guy. Like, mm. what can I get to satisfy what I want right now? Mm-hmm. Like, we can leave the house. No joke. Like, we'll leave the house. And if there's, like, a bowl of candy bars, some string cheese, and some apples, mm-hmm. three of our kids will eat the string cheese and apples. We'll come back and literally Max will be like, like the bowl of candy bars will be gone. He'll be like, well, I was hungry. I needed something to eat. We're like, yeah, but there's healthy food right here that's going to make you. It's going to build muscle. It's going to give you energy. Right, right. Like you're going to be a, a healthier, happy person in the long time. In the long run, he's like, but it's so sweet and I just can't stop it. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> and he is just a here and now. It's just mm-hmm. like when it comes to getting his homework done, I don't. he doesn't want to do his homework because mm-hmm. it's, I don't want to take the time to actually stop and think about it. Instead, I just want to watch. I want to watch. YouTube of people playing video games, which <laughs> drives me nuts, which is like a thing, oh, yeah. right? And it's just like, oh, what, what's, dude. The, what's the game right now? For, right. Fortnite? Fortnite. Fortnite. Oh, yeah, Fortnite. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a big thing in our house. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, it's, it's the craziest thing. Whereas, like, and then Marley, who's 12, mm-hmm. but like, she's going on 25, yeah. she literally <laughs> follows us around with like a clipboard taking notes for us. She's like our perfect little assistant. Mm-hmm. And you're like, hey, Mars, you know, I'm, you know, what do you want for breakfast? She's like, mm, can I? have like two egg whites mix it with an egg and i'm going to do some toast and some butter because i need a proper balance of my proteins carbs and fats and i'm just like <laughs> wow <laughs> that's pretty wild yeah. but like she's just got she's so mature and she's just she's always forward thinking mm-hmm. she actually just did a, a i mean she was 11 at the time and she did her own little business and she ran a gymnastic seminar out of her garage over the summer and like she's she's like a little businesswoman which is amazing and then we got Cash, who's my little dude. He's seven. Mm-hmm. He's got the hard work thing down, and he just mm-hmm. he likes to work really hard for stuff. But when it comes to like the respect, well, the, he's good with the respect, but then kindness, he's just like this mischievous little punk, because right? <laughs> he knows he can get away with it most yeah. of the time. Um, but at the same time, like he will actually he <coughs> will work really hard for a long term goal, which mm. is awesome. So it's like, you know. <clears throat> All the, and then, but then Ruby, who's like you know the other bookend on the yeah. on the very end of it, she's another here and now person. So like okay. we've got two kids that just I don't know what it is. It's it's like nature versus nurture. I don't know where they picked it up, but sure. the middle kids look down the road, and the bookends, our thirteen year old and our five year old, they just want whatever they can get right here and right now. Mm. Whatever's gonna whatever's gonna satisfy whatever their needs are. Sure. And it's like and so with them, um, it's. Uh, 
It's a nonstop battle. We're yeah. still looking for the okay. solution. Yeah. We don't know what it is. I was hoping you would give me the answer Dude, so I, I could, you know. Yeah, I, think I, was, I was hoping you'd give me the answer because we can't figure that one out. I got two and a half uh, in nine months. Oh, we're, we're, you we're, got some uh, time. I think it's so interesting because <laughs> I'm not having those conversations yet. Yeah. yeah. That's, that same dynamic exists in my family because I'm a bookend. I'm oh, the last okay. of six and my sister and they have the same dynamic where we want everything. We'll work hard, but we want everything here and yeah, now. now. So okay. it's like we're impatient. Yes. But the ones in the middle, they grew up with each other. So I have twin sisters and my brothers who are basically like twins, even though they're a year apart. Irish twins. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and they, they're willing to just like grind things out and just like be patient and work together and do things. But since we, the bookends, didn't really grow up with anybody, right. we were used mm. to forging our own paths in a right. way. And so it's just interesting dynamic how you mentioned that. It's Gosh. crazy how that works out. Yeah. I, can't, I still can't figure yeah. it out. That's like, wild. So what was it that clicked with you? Because like, look. You got some size on you. Yeah, like you're, I you're, you. You're working hard. But the yeah. thing is, you don't. If if you're focused on the here and now, most people don't want to put in the work mm-hmm. to get there. Yeah. So what clicked? For me, I always say they cut the the ones before me cut down the path. Mm. So they made my path a lot easier. I saw the you know the the success and failures that they had, mm. and they taught me all the lessons. So I didn't have to really go through the adversity that they mm-hmm. had to. So my path was easier. Yes. But I knew by watching them because my brothers led the state in rushing, and they were na- like. Amazing athletes, sisters, very smart, extremely. And but I saw them having to do the things to like put in the hard work and effort. Mm. I know things came a lot easier to me because they forged the path. Right. But I understood by watching them that I did have to put in that type of effort because they sort of instilled it in me. They would mm. kick my ass. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Like you're talking about, like you're right. talking about your, your older son is beating up the younger son. And it was like my brothers were. 10 years older than me, oh, and they, were, yeah. they put it to me. So, <laughs> yeah, so I, I think right. just seeing those types of things happen just really, really made me focus in. So at what age does it click? Because <laughs> Max is 13, <laughs> you know, and we're like, it's got to happen that's, one of these days where all, something's going to click. That's a great uh, question. Yeah. yeah. I, dude, honestly, I didn't start paying attention to the lessons they taught me until... It was almost, I say, too late for me. I was mm. like 18 when it finally okay. clicked. Like, mm. they were out of the house. <laughs> yeah. And then it finally clicked. Like, um, I was like, one day, like, started working out hard because I was like lazy. I yeah. saw them do great things athletically, mm-hmm. and I was lazy. I was like eating the candy, getting overweight, and things like that. Mm. But 18, 19 is when it finally clicked for me. Wow. And I don't, okay. I think I was just more stubborn than anything right. else. Sure. So that I'm, I think you're onto <clears throat> something because that's what we're dealing with. It's mm-hmm. it's this stubbornness, and yeah. it's also like they, they are the ones that like we will warn them. Here's a story, real quick, about yeah. our oldest yeah. Maddox. He was. Uh, this is so perfect. <laughs> that's all the story here, because and it also it captures like. The fact that he has to learn the lessons for himself. We can mm-hmm. warn him and oh, yeah. warn him yeah. and warn mm-hmm. him. So when he was, this is just a few years back. He was must have been nine. Mm-hmm. Um, dude, like, we have just, like, we'll give them every option to eat healthy. And, and obviously, dude, like, it's Chris and Heidi. Like, yeah. we're, like, yeah. we're, we're like, hey, we, we live it. Yeah. Yeah. But we yeah. also, we also expose our kids. And we actually have some junk foods in the house because mm-hmm. we want to expose them to it. Because if you don't, then when they are exposed to it, they're right. going to go bananas. Right. Right. So You're we're like, hey. an environment where they have to make choices. That's exactly yeah. it. Right. So we actually allow them to have it. And he, the Maddox was that one who would just, he'd just keep clearing out the candy drawer. Yeah. We're like, dude, <laughs> you got it. Like, there has to be a balance in life. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to hurt yourself. And I remember going in his room, and I found his secret stash where he would literally take the candy from, from the kitchen, and he would, like, hide it in his room. <laughs> and so I found his candy drawer. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to take that candy. I'm going to give you the option to eat all of it. But you're going to rot your teeth out, all mm-hmm. right? And, and by the way, that candy is going to make you slow, and it's going to make you sick. Mm-hmm. You can do whatever you want with it. He's like, really? I can do whatever I want? And I'm like, like, come on. I'm trying to teach you a lesson. Yeah. Here. <laughs> and, and I'm like, whatever you want. Do your thing. Mm-hmm. So he ends up plowing through this candy. Two days later, his cheek is swollen out oh. to here because he's yeah. got a, he needs to get a root canal because he literally rotted out his teeth. Oh, and I was just like, oh, like, is that not divine <laughs> intervention <laughs> to like come down and teach you this lesson? Yeah. And uh, he's still learning. He's still, oh. But, but they, they just have, he, they have to learn that lessons for themselves. They're so yeah, stubborn. True. Sure. We will tell them till we're blue in the face. Yeah. And we're like, I got no mm-hmm. dog in this fight. I'm just looking out right. for you. Yeah. I was like, I'm good. I figured it yeah. out. I'm just telling too you close. for your own sake. That's too close, it. You know? too, I'm too close. And you know, it, it's it's funny that that that, that, dyna- that dynamic occurs because uh, my mom always says that my dad had no business raising children, but he was meant to lead men. Mm. Very, you know, my dad's a Vietnam vet, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, his form of discipline when you know 
uh, spanking wasn't working, he's like, grab flashlights. We're going to go for a march. Oh, wow. Or, you know, you're going to do a wall sit. I'm no. taking notes over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, you like, like, could go to jail for some of this <laughs> okay, shit. Okay, okay. Yeah. Never mind. Uh, um, but uh, he, uh, you know, his, his whole thing on uh, fatherhood specifically was, I'm, I'm too close to you to, for you to listen to me, mm. you know. So my job, and he didn't explain this to me until after I had moved out of the house and I was in school. Um, I'm too close for you to listen to the lessons I want to teach you. So it's my job as a father to put you in front of people that you will listen to and that I want you to learn from. Yes. You know, that's how I developed a relationship with my godfather. And that's how he intentionally put people in front of me, whether I knew it or not to learn the lessons that he wanted me to learn. That's good. So, that, I mean, that was a huge level of awareness on his part as a father to, to nip it in the bud and, you know, instead of going through the, the father-son frustration mm-hmm. of, why aren't you learning what I want right. you to learn? <laughs> right. You know what? I already know that you're not going to listen to me, so here's somebody that you will listen to. Yes. You know? That totally makes sense. You know? And I think that's exactly what we need about now. Mm-hmm. Is. <laughs> right? no, you know? it, it works, though. Oh, it no, really, absolutely. And you're spot on. And you know this from coaching. You know, you'll have people that you worked with for however long, and you tell them everything that you tell mm-hmm. them, impart your wisdom in so many different ways, mm-hmm. and then they're like, Hey, I just spent an hour with Durs, and he told me this thing, and <laughs> you know dead. what? I'm going to start doing it. Uh, for, for every coach out there, every coach knows exactly that, and that is the most frustrating thing in the world. I've been telling you that for yeah. years, yes. you know, for months. Totally. You know? Totally. And so, you know, sometimes it just has to come from a different lens, yeah. from a different voice. Yep. Different, a different vessel. That's true. Will. And the same thing lands so differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah, true. It's yeah. true. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's, that's pretty wild, man. <laughs> Love I love it. Dude, I really... Really appreciate you uh, being with us today. Yeah, man. And, oh, and, and thank you. It's incredible. Before we let you go, I want to ask you uh, uh, a very simple question, and it goes to your your daily routine. Because, I mean, it took us close to a year to get you here, right? You know, so we yes. we know that you're busy um, managing business, managing family, all the all the things. But you know, what do you do each and every day for you to empower your journey? Um, so the I'd say a game changer for me is every morning I wake up at 6 a.m. and I immediately, I straight line to the garage where I've got a treadmill Mm -hmm. and I do 15 minutes of cardio. Mm, That's it. I I literally just put that treadmill on an incline. I'll go 10 minutes on the treadmill, then I'll jump on the assault bike and I'll crank out five minutes of intervals. And, um, but I've committed to 15 minutes. And it has nothing to do with the physical physiological benefits. Right. It is all creating the tone for the day. Uh-huh. You know, it's it's. I have to start the day with a win yeah. of actually doing something beneficial for me. And so that when I started doing that, I started doing that about a year and a half ago, and that's been a game changer. It has helped me find so much more structure in my day, mm. and because I'm starting out with that with that accomplishment. Yeah. And so, um, yep, I wake up at six. I wake my kids up because they got to get ready for school. Yeah. Um, I make sure that they're good. I'll usually throw some whole grain waffles in the toaster for Cash and Ruby, mm-hmm. and because Maddox and Marley want to create, they want to make their own mm. breakfast. And I, I say, hey guys, all right, cool. I'm heading out. I'll go right out into the garage. I start my thing. If they need anything, they know where to find me. I'm out there on the treadmill just doing mm-hmm. my thing. Yeah, right. And after 15 minutes, I come back in. I help them p- pack up the rest of their lunches. I mean, I'll totally give you the, day, the minute by minute. Yeah. Pack up the rest of the lunches. Get the kids in the car. I, I drop off Cash and Marley at school. Take Maddox to school. Usually, then I'm back around 845-ish because mm-hmm. his school is pretty far away. So I usually get back around 845. At that point, sometimes... Um, and it, it depends on what's happened the night before, and I'll, I'll get there. Sometimes I'll go back to bed and sleep for an hour because I'm only running on about five hours. Got it. And I need at least six or seven to function properly. Mm-hmm. So if, I only, if I'm only running on five, then I'll go back to bed for an hour. Then I wake up, and that's actually when our executive team, we've got, we'll usually start our, our executive meetings, board meetings, planning meetings, product meetings. So that, that'll run 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. Um, 
And that'll all happen because business has grown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, which is great. Like mm-hmm. they, things are really moving. And so we, we need that kind of structure in the day to get all the teams moving, doing what they need to do in order to take transform, you know, to yeah. the next level. So we'll, we'll do, we'll get through those meetings. And then, um, and then usually from there, all, Squeeze, I'll run out in the, in the garage before the kids come home from school because the kids will come home at 2.30. Yeah. So I'll run out in the garage usually around you know, 1.30 to 2.30, get mm-hmm. my lift on. There you go. And, uh, yep, and I just I set a running clock, and I'll just do whatever and whatever I got. There know, you wh- go. Whatever's on the agenda. Sure. So yeah. I, yeah. I have some fun with it, but also yeah. sometimes I'll just pull up the app mm-hmm. and just see, see whatever it, it gives me. Um, and then my kids come home at 2.30, and then that's when things get crazy because that's when they've got – dance and MMA and basketball and mm, yeah. you know piano and all mm-hmm. these different things so um, we are blessed to have the most wonderful nanny in the world and mm-hmm. she's actually been with us for seven years so she's raised the kids nice. and so we've got you know a couple different cars and they'll yeah. go different directions start dropping kids right. off you know I'll run a couple in one direction she'll mm-hmm. run the couple in another direction so we'll do that we come back together usually around six seven o'clock at night is when the family's back together and then we'll, uh, we'll whip up some food, and then we'll, you know, kind of get the kids wrapped up for the night, do mm-hmm. their thing, get the kids bathed, get them in bed. Then Heidi and I, that's when we go to work. That's, that's like grind time for us because okay. that's when we have to work on, on not just team stuff as far as with it, for the company, mm-hmm. but that's individual stuff. So that's when Heidi will dive into her social media, okay. which is really important in business. Mm-hmm. Sure. So Heidi will start working on her social usually around 9, mm-hmm. from about like 9 till 1. Okay. And then... Um, you know, I'm in, in product development, so and we've one of our big teams that actually does the app. So we've got stateside developers, but then we also have a development team in India. Yep. And they their shop opens at nine thirty PM because they're twelve and a half hours ahead of us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So so come nine thirty, then I jump on with Tarun and some mm-hmm. and Sanjeev and Ball and you know the whole the whole team over yeah, there, yeah. Uh-huh. and we'll jam from like nine thirty till one thirty in the morning or two thirty in the morning mm-hmm. because that's their daytime. Right. So we'll be going back and forth right there, developing the next features in the app, etc. Yep. And I go to bed and do it all. Groundhog Day. Love <laughs> it. We just do it. Love and it. I wake up at six and I do my mm-hmm. fifteen minutes. Yeah. And then hey, that's that's my win. And that's no joke. When I started doing that, for the longest time, it's just like I put it off and I just y- you you pull yourself through the day mm-hmm. and then you start dreading what it is that you have to do and you think about all these mm-hmm. and I promised myself I was going to work out and if that doesn't happen then you start to doubt yourself right yeah. you know then you start to beat yourself up so as long as I start with that if I don't work out from 1:30 to 2:30 cuz who knows what's going to happen, right? right? If that doesn't happen, I still won. I still mm-hmm. got it in. But I mean like I'll tell you straight up right now, I'm not my fitness now isn't anywhere close to where it was in my CrossFit days, you know, when I was just getting after it, when I didn't have as many mm-hmm. responsibilities. Sure. Yeah. But you know what? I'm still maintaining it. And yeah. then almost 41. I'm, I'm happy there. there but go. more than anything, all that fitness aside, yeah. it's just it's, it helps me get my mind right. Love it. Yeah. And so it that. sets the cadence for the day. For sure. I yeah. love okay. that, man. And where can everybody go and connect with you and everything that you have, your products, your apps? Oh gosh! Yeah. yeah. So give us a list. Uh, yeah. yeah. Dude, run, run, run it off, where, dude. Where, where do we, we need to start? Send um, so uh, up for social media, of course, it's uh, Real Chris Powell on both Facebook and Instagram. My wife is Real Heidi Powell. She's got a phenomenal blog of it's like it's a huge library of all the things that we've built at HeidiPowell.net. But what we've built so far over yeah. the last three years is Transform. And that's Transform with Chris and Heidi's. But we've got the most robust transformation app out there now. Love that it. is the Transform app. Um, you can find everything at Transform HQ. So it's Transform Headquarters or TransformHQ.com. So we've got the app. We just rolled out our new supplement lines. We've mm-hmm. got meal replacement shakes. We've got boost shots. We've got coaching. So you can get one-on-one coaching, very similar to like what we've done on the show. And you know, what's really cool is, um, you know, rewind – to when we were doing the show and mm-hmm. I know I went through that identity crisis leaving it because it was there's so much so much fulfillment that we got from doing mm-hmm. that but yeah. one of the biggest problems was that we were only working with 15 people a year we could literally select 15 yeah. from hundreds of thousands of letters from people asking for help right. we have over a million letters from people asking for help wow. so we always we said hey when this when this is all said and done we can't do the show anymore we must build a platform to help more people it, so it's really cool because right now on transform we are actively doing thirty five thousand transformations wow which nice. is amazing that's yeah, awesome yeah it's dude. really cool around the world love it yeah we just had a, we just had a hundred of our transformers come into town here and from everywhere from Finland Australia mm-hmm. UK and we all just spent the, the, the weekend together 
together, a hundred of them. It was just, it was amazing. It was, it's electric because, and all these people, they've, they've lost, you know, anywhere from 10 pounds to 150 pounds in Transform. That's with awesome. The, That's with awesome. the platform that we built. Mm-hmm. It was just, it's been really cool. Good it's been really cool. Man. That's awesome. Thank you. Man. I'm excited Love for you. Yeah, That's oh, fantastic. Yeah. We're just getting started. Oh, yeah. Like, it's going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, again, dude, thank you so much for making the time to be on the show. Yeah. Um, Thanks for having me. Dude. <laughs> We'll do it again. Absolutely. For sure. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, we got to get Dude, your other half so much, on. brother. Yeah. Yes. yes. We, we got to bring, we'll, yeah. we'll drag Heidi in here. Oh, okay. yeah, no and, doubt. And she'll give you a whole other side of the story. That's so. what's <laughs> I'm yeah. looking forward to hearing it. Yeah, Dude. we'll make it happen. Awesome. You know, for everybody out there in uh, Feed Me, Fuel Me land, the, the interweb, if you will, uh, you know, if your brand matches our message, we have some uh, uh, sponsorship opportunities available. Uh, hit us up at uh, info at feedmefuelme.com. Mm-hmm. And uh, until next time. Feed me, fuel me.